Guys, today I want to talk to you about duck hunting on public land and marshes. It's a pretty big challenge, and if you've been out there before, you definitely know that. But the key to success has nothing to do with expensive gear, the shells you use, or being a good caller, or even having duck calls, or the decoys you use. It all has to do with location. Because if you look at the ducks out there, where do they want to land? Just because you walk out in the public marsh and you see a spot and you think, this is it, this is the good location, the ducks are going to want to be here, but that doesn't mean the ducks will actually go there or that's where you want to be. So you have to pick the right location. When you walk in, you're looking around and you're looking at the birds flying. And you're saying, okay, there's a bunch of birds here and they're all coming in and they're landing in this area in the back. Maybe they're landing in a corner, maybe they're landing in the middle of the field, but where are those birds landing at? And once you find where the birds want to go, then you have your location, then you have your area you want to go to, and you try to set up there. But it's all based on location, because this isn't the same as hunting private land, or your own field, or farm pond, or whatever, where you have control of the area. You don't have other people hunting in there, and you get to put your decoys wherever you want. They're the only decoys out there. You are the only people out there calling, and the birds want to go into there. That's not it. This is public land. You're walking into an area where there's already tons of other hunters either out there or constantly coming in. They're coming in and set up. They may set up right next to you. It's public land. You can't do anything about it, but you can make the best of it. And so you have to find the location because these birds, they get smart. I mean, they've been shot at for a while now, especially the longer the season goes on. Yes, new birds will move in, but they're getting shot at all day, time and time again. And so they get wise on the areas that they come in and land. And if they see something they don't like and it's not the area they wanna be in, well, they won't land there. They'll go somewhere else. It's just location. I mean, it, it's that big of a deal out there. There are so many birds and they have so many areas to go and it needs to be your area or you're not gonna have a successful hunt and you're not gonna find continuous success. So what do we do to increase our chances of a good hunt? Well, first thing is we go out and scout the location. So we like to do that about a week before season starts. And this year we went out on Friday and scouted, Saturday we hunted for the season opener in Kansas. And so what we did is we just walked out. Um, there wasn't a lot of water in there yet. So depending on the area you're hunting, you may wanna bring your waders. We just wore our mud boots in and we just walked out into the marsh and watched the birds and we probably stayed out there an hour or so but we were just looking around seeing where the birds were going and then once we saw where they were going we were going to that location for a closer look to try and say hey okay well we know the birds are wanting to come in here where can we set up where can we reasonably have say four or five guys and bring them in here and where can we all find cover to hunt this spot and then also what direction is the wind going to be blowing because that's a big factor too the ducks are going to want to land into the wind they don't want to land with the wind they want to land against it because it provides a buffer it allows them to slow down so they're not coming in so hot and that's where you get the ducks with their wings cupped and they're slowed down and you get a really good shot on them but that's also the way they want to land and so you have to set up prepared for that and you might open a lane for them to land in or whatever but however you do it you need to keep in mind that they're going to want to land into the wind and that is how you're going to have to set up. And so if you have cover on one side, but the ducks aren't going to be able to land there, well, then that might not be the spot that you're going to want to hunt. You may want to go to another location and find something else that works better. And speaking of another location, when we go out and scout, we have in mind probably about five different spots that we can go and hunt before we actually get out there. And the reason for that is, again, because you're hunting public land, you have no control over anything out there. You don't know how many people are gonna be out there. There might only be a couple, but when we went out on opening day, there was probably about 15, 20 other groups out there already. And that was like an hour and a half before shooting light was even there. So the marsh was completely packed. And when you see that and you're out there, it's like, what the heck do you do? Well, that's why you got backup spots in mind. You might not get the prime spot that you were hoping to get, but you can find other spots to go and hunt and still have a successful day out of it rather than just having to turn around and say, well, that's it. There's nowhere to hunt. No, there's always going to be a spot to hunt. You just have to look for it and find it and have that in mind before you get out there. And if you don't, that's okay. You just walk in and watch the birds and see where they go and see if you can find a spot that hasn't already been taken and you can set up there and hopefully have a successful hunt out of it. Now, the next thing we'll get to here in a sec is decoys walking in and what our setup is and we go very light. So let's take a look. We probably have like five or six dozen decoys in here and then we have probably a couple dozen more um, that we keep on our sled that we actually take out with us. And the reason is we pack light. When we go out duck hunting in public marsh, we try not to take many decoys. We throw it all on our sled. We have all of our gear and equipment on there and we strap over the top of it and we just drag out one sled and that's all we take with us. And so we try to hunt light on usually about 
one to two dozen decoys. One and a half is probably about prime that we're gonna go with, but next time I go out and hunt, I'll probably use one to one and a half dozen decoys just to lessen the weight. You're gonna hear a lot of people saying, well, the more decoys, uh, the more attention you'll draw, and the birds will just suck right into you if you have a bigger spread. Well, maybe, but maybe not, because when you actually look at the ducks sitting on public land and marshes that are in the hunting areas, how many do you see that are in massive flocks of like 50 or 100 on the water. You don't see many. <laughs> the reason for that is because they don't come in and just land in huge flocks. They do out in certain places, but usually it's not public refuges and public land hunting areas because they can't land in those massive numbers. There's just so many hunters there that they know not to do that and they don't come in. They come in in small groups and they feed in the fields. And usually when we set up, we try to stay away from the timber because the reason that they're coming in to feed in the fields is not to land on the edges where there's some crop and a bunch of open water and feed in there. No, they're wanting to go and land like in the middle of the fields in concentrated areas where there's a lot of crop and a lot of food. And so, yes, you can do very well hunting in the timber sometimes, but more often than not, we have more consistent hunts trying to stay away from the timber and out of it, closer to areas where they're actually feeding in larger groups, and that tends to be in the actual field itself on the inside and they don't often like to land as well out on the edge to where you'd have a shot if you're setting up in the timber. Now the last thing I want to talk to you about is our setup when we actually go out and hunt the public refuge and duck marsh and whatnot and what we found to be successful for us and it's actually going in light. You know, we've hunted with an A-frame boat before and we did for about a year and we went back to the sled. We've hunted with duck mojos before. We have four and we don't use them at all. We use dub mojos. We use two dub mojos and one teal mojo because honestly, it doesn't matter what kind of mojo you're using. It gives some motion and change to your spread, something that stands out a little bit and it draws the birds in, it sucks them in and we do just fine using dub mojos. We kill them, it's over them in public refuges and a lot of times we do better than a lot of other people out there. Not necessarily because we're like better hunters, but we've been hunting the area for a while and we've found what works and what works well. And we've also found that dub mojos do just as good as duck mojos. They're about half the price. They're lighter, easier to carry in, and they take AA batteries. So you, if you forget to charge them, well, that's not a big deal because you don't have to charge the batteries like you do the duck mojos. You just put in some new AA batteries and it works just fine. It keeps our pack in lighter because we walk in on foot. We've just found that to work better for us versus a bow. I know it's convenient if you've been hunting for a while and use a boat, um, but public duck marshes for us, we've just found it easier to walk in on foot and pull a sled. One sled carries everything we need. We have our decoys down here and we probably have close to um, three dozen in here right now and that's too many after our opening hunt for the year. Uh, we're just gonna take out probably a dozen and bring like one and a half dozen and it'll make it lighter to pull in for us and we'll do just as well. Usually we hunt pretty light. Just got, you know, season starts, you get excited and you're ready to throw out a lot of decoys. Well, you don't need that many. And then we have our stakes, we bring our stools, a little bit of cover for us and I'll link to it below, but it's a Eagle Claw uh, Chappelle, Jet Sled, Jeff, yeah, whatever, <laughs> you get the idea. Um, one other thing I would like to say is if you're new to hunting and a beginner and getting into it, you don't need to spend a ton of money on gear and on decoys. See, I bought five dozen decoys all rigged with bombshell weights, three mojos in a mojo bag, all with batteries and stakes, and I got all of that for $100 off of Facebook. So if you're new to hunting, highly recommend you go to Facebook and look for duck decoys, use secondhand worn ones, it doesn't matter, they don't need to be fully painted, best brand, whatever. They can be a little bit beat up, that's fine. It'll work just fine. We've killed limits and hunted for a long time just using older flambos, and they do the job. I mean, it's it's a duck, and it simulates a duck. The real issue is just location and having motion in your spread. And for the motion, we bring a jerk cord with us in case it's not a windy day. But the quality of the decoys really doesn't matter so much as long as it kind of looks like a duck. That's why we use dub mojos kind of looks like a duck, 
Not exactly, but the birds aren't going to be able to tell in the air, and it's not going to make a whole lot of difference because either way, doves fly out there. It just draws their attention because it gives them some motion. So it's a really good way to hunt on a budget, and I highly recommend going to Facebook Marketplace, buying secondhand used gear. It works just fine. It does the job. Your success is not based on the quality of your gear. It's based on how you make the best use of your location and the gear and your quality as adapting to the environment and using what you can. When we go out and hunt, and if we do hunt the timber, part of our time spent, because we have time in between shooting light and we get out there a little bit early, is we'll go and find sticks and brush and marsh grass, and we'll pick our spots where we're going to stand in the timber, and then we'll go and pull all that stuff and make a little lean-to structure in front of the trees. We try our best to cover up because you can't just solely rely on your camo. It doesn't matter what kind of camo pattern brand you have. It is never going to fully match the environment. And that's why if you can provide a little additional cover, you're not going to stand out so much because even if you're in full camo and you're standing next to a tree, you might stand out a little bit to the ducks. You know, light comes out, you may begin some reflections off of you and there's something they might see they don't like, they they don't like your spread, they flare, whatever, but you can do that a little extra to provide more cover for yourself and increase your success of a hunt because you're hidden and you're doing it well. So hope that helped guys. If you have any questions, anything you want us to cover more that you feel like we didn't really talk about, drop it in the comments below and we'll try our best to get another video or answer those questions for you. So thanks a lot.